Hello, today we're going to talk a little bit more about Warhammer Fantasy Battle 3rd Edition. Address some of the issues you may have if you decide to game master or play a game of this. These are things to make your game go a little bit better. And if you can sort out the house rules that you're going to use to work on these before the game, then you don't have to argue about them during the game. This is the uh, the book, 3rd Edition. It's, it's a nice system. Um, I would avoid taking too many heroes. Some of the army lists can take 20 or 30 heroes till you kit them out with equipment. You will spend hours looking through your stats, looking through your cards, and things like that. Maybe just a house rule that, you know, X, you get five heroes or something like that. The other thing is the chariot rules are a bit um, strange in 3rd edition. Um, you, you can't deal with them in certain armies. And the cannon rules are very peculiar. I've included a link to a Dropbox in the description that has articles from White Dwarf, um, erratas, you know, expansions, but it also has a scan that I did of second edition um, chariot rules and cannon rules. So you can use the second edition rules. The other thing is keep an eye on magic items. Remember, you only get one ability at a time. Here's a unit for third edition. The beauty of 3rd edition to me has always been the ability to form your, your guys up wide or deep or however you want to. This unit's in two ranks. And the advantage of this is you, you have guys on the side. You can fire more troops if you have bows. And you can cover a wider area. You don't have to worry about being flanked and things like that. And you can change in 3rd edition. Um, two guys per side with each move is, is a free move. So it's very easy to flow back and forth from one formation to the next. This is a, a 25 block 5x5, five five, and a good formation for, for combat. You've got extra, uh, an entire extra rank in the back, and you have a um, good formation for pushing. And then, last but not least, this is the individual hero. This is going to create some issues, and I'm going to go into this in depth, that you have to sort out how you're going to handle this. Um, in order to play the game, because you're going to run into some peculiar situations because a completely different set of rules apply to this one guy as apply to your your regiments. Um, and not equally, I would say. So here you have a formation on the left and a formation on the right. Standard Warhammer situation. You're going to have a combat. One side charges the other. You do your, your standard combat. Um, and initiative is how you determine who, who attacks first. In many cases, certain weapons have an initiative bonus in the first round, or an initiative penalty, such as uh, double-handed weapons or something, instead of just a generic ice strikes first. In the case, if the Dark Elves win, I'm going to tell you the rules as written, as if the Dark Elves win and they have a leader, they can expand. Now, by leader, every unit starts the game with a leader that's basically one of the regular troopers. So uh, typically you will have that. So you can choose to expand. No test is required. And you can expand out there as wide as the guys in front of you. Or you can keep expanding if you want to. If you wanted to put extra guys out on the side, you could do that if you had your leader. The opposite is true if the high elves win. If, they, if you have a wider formation and you win, the guys that are unengaged hanging out on the sides will wrap around automatically unless you pass a leadership test to restrain them because they're eager to get into combat. I kind of like this because this makes sense to me that a wider formation would wrap around a smaller uh, smaller formation. And in fact, I would even consider this a good house rule to say both sides do this, winner or loser. Because if the Dark Elves win and push back two inches, why would they push back the guys that aren't even in contact? They would sort of automatically, naturally fold around. It's just a house rule. So I would say both sides have the same rule, winner and loser. Here's another situation you're going to run into. Um, this unit is being attacked from both sides. The rules do not really handle this properly, I don't think. So I'm going to tell you how the rules handle it and how I would suggest handle it. So here's a unit. It's in two ranks. It's charged front and rear. The back rank turns around to face, and they, they fight normally they're probably going to get pushed back because they're being beaten up so badly. Now, the rules say they have to be pushed back two inches, but it also says that just imagine that they got pushed back and let them there. I don't play that. If a unit gets pushed back and there's an enemy unit in its way, it cannot give way. It, it auto breaks because I would say that they're just being crushed from all sides, so they would automatically break. That's a house rule that I would suggest using. 
Here's another interesting thing to keep in mind also. If the unit was only in one rank, everyone's facing toward, towards the front, and then they get in a situation where they don't have any unengaged models to turn to face, they, they have a problem, even more so. Getting charged in, you know, while you're already engaged causes a panic test, but the guys in the back get a free automatic hit. So if you have a, a model that is fighting to the front and someone comes around the back, they automatically hit, and that includes the wraparound. So in the case of the wraparound troops, the, if the troops wrap around the back and there's no one to turn around to face them, they automatically get hit. All right, here's the last dilemma. You have the single hero versus the entire regiment. The hero will invariably cause some problems because he doesn't abide by normal rules. In order to get a rank bonus, this is in the rule book, but not in the summary, so it's often over overlooked. You have to have four models fighting to the front in order to get the rank bonus. So if you get hit in the flank, you do not get your rank bonus. But in this situation, a single model is not going to fight against four models, especially because in third edition, diagonals don't fight. You may optionally choose a house rule and say diagonals do fight, but then you still only have three models fighting, so you're not going to get a rank bonus. Rank bonus requires four models fighting to the front. So this hero can walk up to this unit and usually win combat because all he has to do is, is overcome the standard bearer, and if he wants to, he can try to capture the standard bearer. So this is a problem with, it just makes an odd situation where one guy walks up to a whole regiment and everyone just stands there, particularly when you consider the rule that says only the winner, the winning side, can expand or wrap around. So he can walk up there and everyone just stands there like the British Palace Guards at Buckingham Palace, and he just goes down the line, sticking a shiv in everyone's rib one by one, killing them all. And it, it just seems kind of, to me, odd that this would happen, that the other 20 members of your unit would just stand there and allow you to be stabbed, each waiting their turn to individually go up and get stabbed. A couple of things you can do. First of all, the leader moves like a skirmisher. And I would just treat him and say a simple rule, abiding by the rules, he's a skirmisher, okay? And therefore, a skirmisher can never charge a form unit. Problem solved. Um, if he if he wants to charge a form unit, he better join a form unit. But as a skirmisher, he cannot do that. He he has the benefits of a skirmisher, but not the penalty of a skirmisher. So he can move. The other thing is, it would be very normal to treat this guy as unformed. He's not formed up to anyone. Although the rules explicitly say that he is never penalized for being unformed even though he is not formed up. A, a person, a one-man formation is not a formation. You have no formation. And by not penalizing him for ever being unformed, all individual characters can declare a charge every turn and get a double move. Because the penalty for failing a charge is that you move, double your move, and then you're unformed. Guess what? Here is a never unformed. So just charge everywhere. Start the game and just charge up all about all you want to. That's really handy if you're on a horse. You can just charge like a maniac. That doesn't make any sense. So you could say, A, the guy is constantly unformed because he has no formation, which would cause him penalties, or he's a skirmisher. The other thing is if you use the rule that allows the loser to wrap around, he's going to rapidly find himself in this situation. The model in the back is going to stab him, and the models on the sides are going to get additional attacks against him. And if he happens to get pushed back, he'll auto-break because he can't go anywhere. These are just... A couple different ways of resolving the situation where one guy goes up against 20. And I think all of them are somewhat plausible. Treat him as a skirmisher. Let him count as being unformed. Or allow him to be wrapped around and pushed back. And by being pushed back, he gets taken out. I would even suggest you may want to consider expanding this to individual models up to maybe the size of an ogre or something like that. If there's just one guy and there's no reason to say you, you shouldn't be able to, to push around him. I don't understand the idea that everyone has to stay rigidly in formation, shoulder to shoulder, and, and not engage. So if you apply the rule for wrapping around to both the winner and the loser, it will, it will, it will help a lot of the situations. If you apply that individual heroes running around are skirmishers, that would 
prevent this from even happening to begin with. And if you say that individual models running around are not in formation, they are, quote, unformed, that will also solve a lot of these problems. So there's a couple issues for third edition. Just before you get started, just remember um, chariot problems, cannon problems. The magicals work fine. I think they're the best version of magicals, you know, that are out there. You may want to print the, the things out. Um, you get your formations wraparounds and individual characters so there's some uh, issues and other than that you should have pretty fun game of warhammer fantasy battle third edition all right check my other videos i got uh, some campaign rules up i got uh, some army builder files made up for you so have a good time